Hello, I'm Tom Law from the Bar Tutsa Lab, and in this particular video, we're going to be looking at the ancient art of Kifu. Now, I don't particularly like the use of the key for self-defense, and there are many, many, many better alternatives out there. If you've got a torch, use a torch. If you've got a bat, use a bat. If you've got pretty much anything else that is more weaponized, do use it. But it is important to learn and practice learning how to use the things that are in your hands when you're at moments of disadvantage. As we know, people tend to attack us when we're in condition white, when we do not know what's going on. And for many of us, that's when we're on our phone and we're zombified into our phone, we're texting, we're scrolling, we're doing something. So learning to attack and defend with that phone in your hand is very important. It's something I discuss in other videos. By the same token, entry or egress to your vehicle or to your home is again another vulnerable point because it takes a lot of attention to get the key in, find the right key and turn it. So again, it's a, it's a series of seconds, potentially 10, 15 seconds where our mind is solely in the world of the key. And that's something where people are looking out for your attention to be elsewhere. As you fumble with your keys to get into your lock at night, to get into your home at night, whether you're coming into your car park and you're just getting into your car, these are moments of vulnerability and therefore moments of attack. And the key will already be in your hand. So how can we make the best use of the attributes of the key? First thing, the anatomy of the key, okay? Make sure when you're using the key that we just grab the most single, robust and sharpest profile key we have. A skeleton key like this is not really going to do the business. You know, this is not going to work. And something like this can be made effective, but a sturdier, longer, more robust car key is ideal. So you can do every technique with something like this, if you wish, but a more robust car key is more suitable. Another thing, how you grip it. So pinch grip is best. So between your thumb and your forefinger, making sure that you don't just hold the plastic bit because this will be, imagine it like a knife with a really weak tang. So you don't just want to rely on that. You want to be grabbing some of the metal too in that pinch grip. Make sure you have a solid grip with it. So if you're putting your key into your car, often you don't need to put the key all the way in. Same with your house. So again, if you operate and get into the habit of that pinch grip, the key is weaponized should you need to use it. And there are a couple of techniques that I practice when using the key, and I'll go through them. They're very simple, they're very basic, and they're principle-led. The first is the double tap with the key. Now, I find I'm a decent boxer. I box a lot. I've got good targeting. I've got good accuracy. Even with those attributes, getting a key into an eyeball that does not want to be poked with said key can be very, very tricky. People will move and they will flinch and when things come towards their eyes, humans are pretty canny and savvy about getting the fuck out of the way. So first one of these is to make sure we're always operating a double tap principle. So if we know that the fight is on or might likely be on, and bear in mind I might be attacked from the side as I fumble with my car, or someone might get my attention from behind. So I don't really know where I am. So do practice this from behind, from the side, from the front and at different ranges, very, very close range, longer range, because there are so many variables to even just one simple technique. Okay, so with the double tap, we're making sure that we're practicing at least throwing two shots to the eyes in a series. The first one with adrenaline, fear, and their reactions might miss. So firing in two to three in a cyclical nature of the double tap key stab is very, very important. Again, just because you've got something that is weaponized, don't forget the rest of you. So don't forget your fence, your de-escalation, your management, your perception of threat elsewhere. All of those things need to be on point. And if an opportunity arises and I can just chin in with the empty hand, I chin in with the empty hand. It doesn't really matter. My objective is to survive and thrive. And whether I use the key or the punch or the headbutt or the knee or the elbow, is by the by. So just because you've got something which is a weaponized tool, don't get too wrapped up in it. If I don't see an opportunity to use this, but I do see an opportunity for a left hook, throw the left hook, no problem. But anyway, double tap. Assuming these things have failed, we're gonna drive under the field of vision. So we're gonna go sharply up. We're not gonna go in and out. So we're not gonna treat him like a door. We're gonna go under this vision. Uh, I do a lot of work in HEMA, Historical European Martial Arts. If you've got armor on, if you've got a helmet on, 
you can barely see things that are coming up from this angle. And that really does replicate the tunnel vision you get when you have adrenal shock. So again, that tunnel vision, you can't see the weapon coming from this angle. It's exactly the same with self-defense. So I don't want him to observe this going in. I want to shoot it up. And again, an alternating contact. I want to get a grip on him or a hand on him. I want to place some control over his balance and his movement. And we're going to cycle. One, two, okay? I don't want to do two flimsy pokes. I want two sharp thrusts. <coughs> Okay, nice and sharp, right into the eye. <coughs> boom, boom. And again, we can practice this closer up. Boom, boom. We can practice this further away. Boom, boom. Or we can practice this from the side. As we turn, as we turn, we do it. Turn and thrust, thrust. You can keep hacking at it, but your accuracy tends to be off. So it's better to have two sudden sharp stabs with it then to really try and shank it in. It's not that kind of tool. So the double tap, wherever you are, make sure you drive it in twice and ideally underneath the field of vision. <coughs> <coughs> and again, you want to move off. Once that's done, you need to prepare to exit scene or then move through into something else entirely, something that is damaging and destructive. This in the eye, it's going to cause pain, fear, disorientation, and you can either choose to use that to exit, or you can choose to use that to enter. That depends on you and the situation you're in. But the double tap, two sharp upward thrusts, practice it in twos, threes and fours, much like you would with a quick jab. But bear in mind that one jab often isn't enough because of the nature of the target, which is the eye. Making sure you have this strong grip. Next thing you want to practice is the screwdriver. So the screwdriver principle is that once I've achieved some degree of attachment of this human, I've grabbed his face, I've grabbed his hoodie, I've grabbed his head, I've grabbed his hair, I've grabbed something, I've grabbed his clothes, some degree of attachment. I'm going to secure the head in a single chance way, like so, and I'm going to use the key in a driving screwdriver-esque fashion. So I don't just try and plunge it in with depth, because sometimes you cock up the angle and you might be trying to drive it into orbital bone. You'll be getting it to somewhere where it can't quite penetrate. So the ability to screw the key as if it were a Phillips screwdriver is really important. But equally important is making sure you've got that grip, making sure that the opponent's off balance by ragging him around and then drive in. Yeah, and then really grind this in as you off balance the opponent but you're always turning, you're always searching, you're not just pushing, you're turning and gouging, you're turning the screw. So it's the best activity for it. Practice it as if you were turning a screw. Turning the screw, turning the screw. So you're here, really drive it into his eye, really drive it into his eye, making sure you've got good back of head pressure, or back hair or jacket or whatever you can get, and make sure you're not just pushing, but you are turning and screwing. And again, once you've got the desired effect of that, have your plan B ready. So if you want to just immediately disengage and exit, you can, or have your plan ready that as soon as this comes out, something else comes in. Don't pull that out and then strike. It's an exchange. So if I'm doing the screwdriver and I want to exit, I want to make sure that I'm exchanging. There is no gap. <laughs> Soon as the pressure comes off, the damage comes on. Pressure off, damage on. Really, really important. Similar to that is the ice pick. Now, I prefer these foregrip, these pinch grip style attacks because that's how you're holding a key. And bear in mind, this is designed for if late at night you're getting into your house, getting into your car, you will hold your key in this way. The ice pick grip is like so. So we grab it and we have, again, make sure you don't just have the plastic bit, but you have some body of the key there. And again, make sure that your grip is tight because it's easy for this to slide through your fingers. So do practice against harder resisting targets. Be careful with your bob because you can shred it to fuck and they're expensive. But you got your key, you got your ice pick grip. And again, everything you can do with a hammer fist, you can do with this. 
But like I mentioned before, don't forget the rest of your body to fight with. Being able to, you know, face claw, grip, punch, elbow, push, as you do these things. Make sure you can practice a continuous flow, interweaving the other hand for striking, grappling, getting a superior weapon, no matter what you want to do. But best targets for these for the ice pick grip are again coming down into the eyes. One, two, so forehand, backhand, or just behind the ear. But a bit like the screwdriver, the great thing about these, you can hack and tear. So you pull in and rip out, pull in, rip out. So as it hits in the skin, you're causing deep lacerations. Or if it goes to the eye, you're really causing maximum damage to the eye. So practice the habit of hit, rip, hit, rip, hit, rip, hit, rip, hit, rip, hit, rip. So practice that kind of sticky hitting, not the, just the transactional hammer fist, even if it's a very good hammer fist. That's all well and good, but we've got a cutting shredding implement here. So cut and shred with it. Hit, rip it out, hit, rip it out, and cycle these blows. But again, these cause pain. They don't necessarily cause damage. So once you've got the maximum utility and surprise out of these, whether it's behind the ear or it's on the eye line, once you've got that, remember you can fill the gap with strikes that put people unconscious. You know, throwing your big left hook, your power slap, your elbow, your headbutt, whatever you want to do. But the ice pick grip is lovely for that. Hit and rip. You can also do an inverted screwdriver. So much like the four-handed screwdriver and we're digging it in, we can also hit and then we can grind. So then we can turn the screwdriver to exactly the same principles, gaining some degree of chancery, some degree of control, kazushi, so they're off balance, rip it in and then grind, but making sure you're always moving them off balance and have your plan ready for something with a bit more blunt force trauma about it to take that person out of the game. These are interstitial attacks in betwixt something with finality, like a proper right hand or a proper left hand. And finally, the one which I like called the funds. See in the funds? Hey. So in the funds, the key is low. So in the first ones, we've got the double tap, bum bum. We've got the screwdriver when it comes to a close grapple. We've got the ice pick and rip. And we've got the inverted screwdriver. The funds is where the key is somewhat inactive. So we've got the key low, the opponent's got closer than we like, and is essentially driving it like the funds, thumb up, and again, we're looking to get into the windpipe, along the arteries, below the ear. Typically, you can't get the eye. The eye is obviously the ideal target for the key. But again, we're just causing enough pain with that shot so we can move into something else. So with the funds, we've got close than we'd like, so we burst it upwards. <coughs> and again, I'd advise that this is a double tap up, albeit now we're very vertical. <coughs> And again, you can float. So we end up too close. I'm gonna do the thumbs into the throat. Boom! I'm gonna teeth some kind of attachment. I'm gonna do the screwdriver. I might step off, do a double tap. And then finally, I'm gonna use this loaded fist without the key to finish the encounter. Straight from there. So again, lots of combinations, but remember pinch grip, make sure you get the body of the key and a little bit of the key shaft itself. Remember that multiple strikes with it are preferred because accuracy is very hard with this. It's very hard to hit someone's eye with this with just one shot. And remember, if you are doing the grinding, so make sure you get your attachment, bodily pressure into the opponent. Make sure they're always off balance. Snarl, be nasty. Once this is in, grind and twist. Grind and twist, and then have your exit plan whether it's to post off and smash, or to move into a different style of grapple, it's completely up to you. But use the key for what it's worth, a brilliant surprise anti-ambush weapon, and then move on to a better tool as befits the scenario.